Okay, so let's talk about branching our stories out. I have this dialogue file, which is our little chapter that I had as an example from earlier. Only, I've incorporated a choice now. Once we actually get to the end of this file, we are brought to a section within this chapter file that presents a choice as to whether I want to go to the inn or back to the spaceship. So it presents us with the choices, which gives us our different dialogue. So if I were to choose the ship, then we would go ahead, well, I had skip on. So if I were to choose to the ship, then we will get the dialogue that comes from going to the ship. And then we proceed to the end of the file. Everything closes out, but we don't actually go anywhere. The file ends here. And what I do have is I have a separate chapter file for the end and a separate chapter file for the ship. So depending on which selection I make, I could go to one of these chapter files. But that just means I need to load it. Loading it just involves adding ourselves a new command to our database, so we can extend it with a new command type, which I will add as a database.add command, and the name of this command I'm going to make load, so that way I can load a new file. This will be loading a new dialog file, and we'll start picking up from the very beginning of that file, or wherever I tell it to. But in this case, we're just going to load a new chapter file depending on what choice we made. So this is going to be a new action because we don't need to run any type of looping logic here. It's just loading a file and we're done. We'll take in a string array because there may be some parameters we'll want to pass in and then we need some kind of action. So let's go ahead and define a private static void called load new dialog file. And this is just going to take a string array for data. So we can pass that into load new dialog file and we have our command that can run but we need to give it some data the first thing that we need is if we're going to be loading this we need to load it from resources because that's where we can load objects from runtime so we'll want to get a file path within resources so if we define a string and just call that our file path we can temporarily set that to string.empty while we figure out what it is we need to load and per our conversation manager, if we load in a new dialog file, we can either stop the current conversation, which is handling the current chapter file that we're running, or we can enqueue a new conversation so that way we can finish the one that we're working on and then start the new file after we finish this one. That could be useful in this case where no matter what choice I want to make, I still want the characters to leave the screen and fade everything out and stop the music and prepare it for the next chapter. So in that case, I would enqueue the new file that we're going to load. We would make our choice, we'd run the lines, and then we would run all the final lines. And then with that new file enqueued, we would begin it after all of this is complete. So we can have a boolean called enqueue and set that equal to false right off the bat. So we'll just default it to there. Now let's get our parameters. So var parameters equals convert data to parameters. And we're going to convert our data, which is that array, into a searchable array of parameters. Now let's just try to see if we have a file path. So we can say parameters.try get value and we're going to need some type of parameter i'll just make this uh right up above we'll copy one of our other parameters identifiers here and we'll do one for the file path so we'll say file path and then the other one for in queue so that way we can identify i cannot spell there so that way we can identify what we're trying to find so it will either be identified with f or file or file path. And for in queue, we'll either be looking for tack e or tack in queue to show us that that's the parameter we want to assign. So let's check and see if we have the parameter for the file path. If we try to get the value for the file path, we can cast out what we receive into the file path variable. We can do the same thing for in queue. Let's see if we passed in the in queue parameter to this. We'll default it to go out to in queue, and we'll also set a default value to false. So if we don't specify it, it's just going to immediately stop the current file that we're in and begin the new one. 
So we now need to try to load that file. So we know that we're going to load any text file inside of Unity as a type of text asset. So let's define a text asset called file, and we're going to be loading this from resources. And we will load, load it as the type of text asset. And then we need to specify a default path for where these things might be located. So we can define that inside of our file paths script. So if we just go ahead and type in file paths, <clears throat> it should recognize that that's a script. We can control, left click it, and go into our file paths script. And we can just add a new section down here as a location for our dialog files. So if I make a new string for resources dialog files, I can set it to the dialog files folder directly within the resources folder. So any dialog file I'll be looking for by default will be inside of this folder. And that, as you can see by the path here, is actually where we are loading our dialog files right now, just manually. But just in case we want to load it elsewhere, we could always proceed it with that little uh, tilde symbol. And we've already got this incorporated with uh, git path to resources since we made this in our characters video. If we proceed the path with the tilde symbol, then it's just going to allow us to define the exact path that we want to look for. So it could be outside of the default folder. In order to allow ourselves to do that, let's not use resources.load, but let's use that file paths fold uh, function that we defined. So git path to resources. Now, the default path is going to be file path or it's going to be the file paths dot dialog files and the file that we want to load is going to be the file path which as I think about it maybe let's change that to file name now the name can contain a path so if we specify a path in the file name then all that's going to do is direct our search to a deeper subdirectory within the default path so could be a file name could be a file path it's up to you okay and as the name implies this is going to get the actual path so let's just change this to string file path right there and now let's go ahead and load the file so this is going to equal resources this is going to equal resources dot load and load as a text file using that newly found file path. Now, if we have a file, then we should try to load it. So we can check and just see if file equals null. If it equals null, something bad happened, and we just want to return and not do anything. It probably didn't find the file, or we probably mistyped it. So let's go ahead and log ourselves a warning just in case. And I've decided to put in a warning saying that it couldn't be loaded from dialog files and to please make sure it exists within that directory. Okay. On the other hand, if it does exist, let's go ahead and extract the lines so that way we can build the new conversation. So list string lines equals file manager, our file manager class we made at the very beginning of the series. That class has a function in it called readTextAsset, which will read all the lines of a text asset for us and return it as a list, including blank lines if we choose to include them. And for our dialog files, we definitely want to include blank lines because those are used for indexing and we will want those for future episodes. So let's call that function dot readTextAsset and we're going to read the file. And let's make sure that include blank lines is true. It already defaults to true, but including it in here just helps us know that that's what's happening and it doesn't hurt anything any. So it's really good just for making sure that we can see clearly what is going on. We are including those blank lines. So now that we've got our lines, let's go ahead and generate the new conversation from those lines. Let's make it the conversation type new conversation as this is what the conversation manager needs and let's create a new conversation from those lines. Okay, now we've got it ready and we just need to know whether we are enqueuing this or not. So if in queue, then we want to go ahead and say dialog system dot instance dot conversation manager dot enqueue new conversation. Otherwise, we're not going to enqueue it. We're going to reference dialog system instance dot 
conversation manager and we're going to start the conversation and just pass in new conversation. This should end our current conversation and we need to make sure that that clears out our queue. So that way we don't mess anything up and we don't continue things that we are not supposed to. We need to wipe it all out and start with a brand new file. And if we look at start conversation, we are stopping the current conversation and we are in queuing the new one, but we're not actually clearing the queue. So that would be an issue. Let's make sure that we go ahead and say our conversation queue dot, we need a clear function. So let's just type clear for now and let's go ahead and generate a clear function that will remove all of the items in our queue so that way we can start fresh. Okay, inside of our conversation queue class, let's come down to the bottom and just add a new function. Public void called clear, and we're just going to point this to our conversation queue and tell it to clear. So with that, we can now start a new conversation, clear out all the old ones, and we're basically starting fresh, which is exactly what we want if we are not in queuing. So now what this command allows us to do is, when we have our choices, if we go ahead and say we want to go to the end, then I will call the load command, and I will pass in the name of the chapter file that I want to load, which is basically the branch from this current part of the story that we're in. And that's going to be chapter one underscore n. So that takes us to the n. Whereas if I were to go to the ship, I would change to chapter one ship. And so I'll be loading a different dialogue file depending on what choice I make here. Now, since I want this to execute, and this is at the end of the file after the choice, I want this to execute before moving to the file, no matter which choice I make, I will go ahead and say in queue is true. So that way we don't immediately jump to the file, but we'll go ahead and finish the choice and finish these ending lines. And chapter one in has all of this dialogue, and we start by setting the background and we'll do the same thing in chapter one, ship. And only thing different between in and ship is when I set the layer media, I have to specify the media uh, parameter identifier just because the name of my media is a number. And the way we set up set layer media is it will look for the type of layer and then it will look for the, or the type of panel rather, and then it will look for the layer that it's on on that panel, which is an integer. So, but five being an integer is also the name of the media file, the background that I want. I know that's a great name, right? But that's actually the interior of the ship. But if I just leave it as an integer, it's going to think that's the layer. So I have to just tell it that it's not the layer. It's the media with dash M. So be aware of that in case you have backgrounds whose names are letters, either change them or make sure you manually specify that that is the media. So as we come to the choice in the story, then we can choose the ship and we get the ship dialog. So that choice is completing and we finish the end of the file. And then we move into the new chapter file. Whereas if we were to go back and choose the end, then we'll go ahead and get to the end instead. So we'll go ahead and finish off the file and then we'll just load the end. Now, if, say, I wanted to go to this file immediately, then I could just say NQ is false, or since it defaults to false, we just remove the NQ parameter altogether, and we should immediately go to the ship file. So let's go ahead and try it. Choose the ship, and we get our first dialog, and now, after I click, we should hit that command and go straight to the other file. Which we do. So, there we go. That's one way that we can add branching paths into our visual novel and start making it more dynamic given our different choices. This is not the only way that we can add dynamic uh, variability to our files based off of user choices, and we'll get into some of those more advanced features shortly, including in the next episode. We're actually going to continue off here and look at a different way that we can add some logic into our files that will allow us to really control how the story flows and what happens based on different parameters. But that is it for this episode. So next episode we're going to pick up and we are going to look at a more advanced topic on creating logic for our dialog files where it can decide to do different things without having to load different dialog files. It can all be contained within the same thing. So I will see you guys in the next episode.